never seen a 12 and a half inch mirror to be figured and it's a thin mirror which are all the rage these days and the problem with thin mirrors is they're usually going to end up being astigmatic like this one and astigmatism is hard to pick up with a ronchi or a, a knife edge but a great tool for checking for astigmatism is the bath interferometer so here's an interferogram of this mirror and you can see that the fringes are not parallel they sort of fan out like a fan and that's a telltale sign of astigmatism and you can move the x y um, adjusters around and in some orientations the fringes will be straight like this next interferogram but you want to be sure you move the fringes around different orientations to look for non-parallel fringes now this mirror is pretty close to a sphere and now's the time to do a uh, correction for astigmatism rather than later. And the first thing you want to do is to use open fringe and uh, analyze the interferogram. It's critical that you get the zero order fringe correct. In other words, if you have a hill, you want to be sure that it's displayed as a hill and not a hole. And it's easy to, to get it mixed up, especially with fringes that are just about straight like these. An old optician's trick is just to stick your hot thumb on the surface for a few minutes to warm that area up and it'll, it'll produce a bump on the surface that'll show up as a bump. And this is the contour plot for this mirror. And I've rotated the mirror so that the uh, stigmatism axis is up and down for the high area and left and right for the low area. And I used a magic marker to mark an X on the side of the mirror for the axis of the high side uh, stigmatism. Here's my 12 inch um, mirror that I'm working on. Uh, I've got it pressed on a lap and I got a button pitched onto the back that I'm going to use with the machine. You see the uh, mark I put on on the edge here. This is the uh, axis of the stigmatism. It's basically um, high here, high here, low here, low here, just uh, actually pretty um, pretty standard astigmatism. And that's because this blank is, is pretty thin. This is 0.7 inches, has edge, edge thickness of 0.7 inches, which is pretty thin. Uh, and even though it looks like a good sphere, it, it, um, it's very common to have astigmatism. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some weights with some double-sided tape on this axis um, out here on, on the edge and we'll have additional that'll cause additional pressure here and on the other side opposite the idea here is this mirror will flex more it'll it'll flex uh, these high spots lower uh, which will polish out and hopefully um, the stigmatism will polish out quicker than just running it by machine and it takes a long time to polish out astigmatism so um, hopefully this will speed it up I'm going to run this with a drape my old draper type machine weight on on it just keep the button in and let her go I'm using 1663 Sirium um, and I started out with a little bit of uh, barn sight so I'll give this uh, five minutes running time. Let's see what happens. I ran it like that for five minutes and not too much was happening, and nor was another eight minutes. So I added two and a half pounds to each side and ran it for nine minutes and then another 15 minutes and that pretty much took care of the astigmatism. 
Here's the contour plot of this mirror. Um, notice that the axis of astigmatism is gone. There's some something going on on the edge, but I think right now they're just uh, artifacts from the open fringe. So now that I got rid of my astigmatism, I'm ready to start figuring the mirror. And I made up a sub-diameter lap, um, which I'm pressing here with these weights. Take these weights off. And And I'm uh, pressing it with a uh, with, uh, Walmart uh, produce plastic, which works very nicely. It's just a regular pitch lap, six inch pitch lap. And um, I'm supporting this mirror. Um, usually you use something like a, like a foam um, to support the mirror, but this, this one doesn't have a flat back, so I'm using a thick um, bubble pack, bubble wrap, and I've actually perforated some of the bubbles so that I have a, a ring supporting it. Um, it's kind of unusual. Start with a little polish here. Using 1663 cerium oxide. Now um, uh, I'm going to do this uh, totally by hand for the for the figuring parabolizing. I'm going to run the machine at uh, low speed uh, to keep it turning, but I'm also going to rotate it. It's, it's important to to rotate the part. I'm going to ro rotate it quite often just so that we don't develop astigmatism again. And I'm going to use a standard uh, Texero um, W stroke for, for parabolizing on the, the sub-diameter lap. Start this thing. <laughs> I'm going to just randomly rotate it just to be sure that I don't develop astigmatism. These first two uh, interferograms are taken of the mirror uh, basically as a spherical surface with my null set up and uh, you can see uh, a lot of aspherosity. Every 20 minutes I'll stop and take a picture of my progress. With my null set up I'll be working with aspheric fringes and moving towards straight lines. But if I were using the bath interferometer I would have straight lines and I'll be working towards aspheric fringes. You need to have to do an analysis each time. So I continue with the 20-minute sessions uh, figuring. And after about an hour, you can see that there's uh, a lot fewer fringes than the initial uh, interferogram. After an hour and 40 minutes, the fringes look straight. But there's just a little bit of spherical left. And it's hard to tell if it's undercorrected or overcorrected. So I used the hot thumb truck to produce a little bump on the surface, and I determined that it was still undercorrected. Getting near the end here, I switched to using 
opaline, which is a, a very fine particle cerium oxide, which gives a rouge-like uh, surface finish. And I gave it another 15-minute session with a sub-diameter tool. It didn't photograph very well, but it, there's actually a little bump in the middle of the mirror. It's about a quarter wave. There's an internal reflection that kind of hides it a little bit. It's a bump that's about this much uh, size. It's only maybe a quarter wave or so, not very much. So I'm going to use a accented pressure and what I'm going to do is use the edge of the tool and put pressure on the edge and just do a little stroke over the center like like so but I need to, to have the, the turntable run while I do that and only for two or three minutes because I don't want to overdo it it's easy to dig a hole so you don't want to do very much in the way of time stop there. I can say it's real easy to, to overdo it and dig a hole. It's better just to do a little bit at a time. Well that took care of it. I got nice straight fringes. I think this mirror is done. It's knowing that your door is always open and your path is free to walk.